Hi, my name is Nick Metcalf and I'm a technical consultant at Pragmatic Solutions. Today, I'll be giving you an overview of Microsoft AI Builder and showing you how you could implement it within your organization. Microsoft AI Builder is an add-on found within the Power Platform. And as such, it works alongside Power Apps, Power Automate, and Dynamics 365. As it says in the name, AI Builder allows you to create and implement AI artificial intelligence within your organization. So what is AI? In general, we can look at AI as basically being a way to extract information from your data. So generally, when we have our data, we need to have it in a very structured way. But things like large bodies of text or images are very hard sometimes to pull out that information we need. As humans, it's a lot easier for us to do. We can be a bit more subjective, but for a computer, you need hard and more often more complex logic to get this information out. So for example, gathering the sentiment of a body of text, whether it's generally positive, generally negative, something like that, or identifying an object in an image. This requires AI, and this can be very complex to write and create. So the idea behind the AI builder is that it simplifies this process and allows you to easily implement AI within your business. The AI builder consists of several models, and there are two types of models. The first are pre-built models. These are models built by Microsoft, ready for you to use straight away out of the box within your organization. And these can be seen here. Within these models, we have several that analyze documents, for example, business cards, invoices and receipts and extract information. And then the remaining of them analyze text, either categorizing them, detecting their language, or pulling out key information from a large body of text. The other type of model are custom models. And these are models that we can make ourselves and tailor to our specific needs. And there are five types of custom models we can make. So we can classify text or extract information from text. We can pull information from documents, count objects within an image or identify objects in an image or create predictions on our data. And the one we will be focusing on today is creating a form processing model. So this is generally used to extract information from documents. So for example, in organization, we're often dealing with invoices, purchase orders, or receipts. And these are often sent in documents, for example, in a PDF. And it can be very hard to extract this information using a computer, creating lots of manual work of manually taking that information from the PDF and entering it into a database. This form processing AI does this automatically, extracting that information from the document and creating it available for you to use however you want. Step one, prerequisites. So when you're creating your form processing model, you're gonna to need to have very standardized template to use in the model. So for example, I have an invoice example here using sample data. The information in this template needs to be in a very standardized template. It needs to be in a very same similar position each time. Different organizations will have different layouts and invoices, and this is completely handled by the AI builder. But as long as from each organization, there's the same layout of all their invoices, then that will be perfect to use the form processing on. The other requirement is that the document is either a PDF, a PNG, or a JPEG file. No other document formats are supported, so you wouldn't be able to pass a Word document directly, for example. Step two, creating a model. To create our form processing model, we have to go to make.powerups.com. And then on the left-hand sidebar, we go down to AI Builder and then Build. From here, we then just click on the custom form processing model. We're going to have a model to process our invoices. So we'll just call this something like invoice processing and then click create. The first thing we need to define for our AI model 
is we need to define what information we want to extract from our invoice or our document. So for example, with our document, we'll, for example, take out the date, the invoice number, and then we're going to want to capture some of this information in this table here, the invoice lines. So to do that, we just have to enter the header information. So for example, to capture the date, we just type date and then add it. Same with invoice number. And then we could have as many of these fields as we want until we're happy we've captured all the header information. And then to add the table, we just go to tables, new table, give it a name, so just invoice lines. And then we just enter all the column names we want to capture. So for example, we would want to capture quantity, description, and price per unit. But again, you can add as many columns as you wish. Once you've defined this information, we can go and define our templates that we want to train our model with. So the templates that we're going to document, so templates we're going to upload, are stored within collections. And we can have multiple collections, and this allows for the fact that we can have different formats of templates that our AI builder can read from. We're just going to do one, for example. So if I click on this, I can then add document and pick an area I want to upload my templates from. I'll just do locally and upload five documents. So you need to have at least five of your template ready to upload to train your model with. If you use more than five, you'll end up with a better model. So it is encouraged, but a five is minimum. Once they have loaded, you can give your collection a name. And then go on to the next stage of tagging your document. The AI builder will then take some time analyzing your documents to pick up all the information from it that you could possibly want to capture. So for example, if I click on show detected words, we see areas where it's picked out information that we may want to capture. So the capturing of this information is what we call tagging. So you can see the fields and tables we defined in the first stage, which are now ready for us to, to pick out on this document. So for example, here, to select the date, I just drag around the whole date, and then I define that as being my date. Same with the invoice number, I just drag around the invoice number and select that as being the invoice number. To select my table, I just select all around my table and define this as my invoice lines table. And then I click into each box individually to define which box relates to which column, like this. And then I just add all the rows in like this. Once I've done all of that, this document is shown as being completely tagged and ready to be trained with the model. And I must do the same process with the remaining document to train my model up. If, for example, I have lots of different types of templates and some of them don't have certain fields that I wanted to capture, I can easily just not capture that field by going to the three and clicking not available in document or if it's not available in any of the documents, I could say not available in collection. And then I wouldn't have to tag this, doc, this field in any of my documents in the collection. Once I have tagged every single document in all of my collections, I can then review my model and see a summary of my model before beginning to train my model up. And this process can also take a few minutes and it will just create the AI model in the background. Once my AI model has been trained, I can see it listed in the models section in make.powerapps, and then I can go into it to see an overview of the information about it. Here, I can perform a quick test of my model by uploading a file and seeing how it analyzes it and what information it picks out. And then when I'm happy my model is performing as expected, I can then publish it, which allows it to be used either in Power Automate or Power Apps. 
So this is what the model looks like when it's been published. And at this moment, I can now go and use it wherever I wish. But it's also important that you're able to maintain and update this model to keep it up to date and working as you want it to. So while you have a live published model, you can also go and edit the model. And this creates a second copy of the model, which you can then adapt, changing maybe some of the tagging or adding another collection of documents to it. And all the while, your live published model will still be there and be allowed to be used, allowing you to maintain these models and use them having two versions at once. Step three, using the model. Once your AI model has been published, you can then use it. And there are two places you can use the AI model within the Power Platform. The first is within Canvas Apps. So if I go to Apps and then I create a new Canvas app and I'll just make one from scratch for a phone like this, I can add my form processing model by going to Insert, to the AI Builder section and then Form Processor. This will add the form processor component and I can just select my model, so my invoicing processor, and it produces a component that looks something like this. So to use this from the Canvas app, the user will click on this button here, and then this will prompt them to either take a picture of the document or upload the document file for the AI model to process and pull out all the required information that the model wanted to pull out. And then that information is free to be used wherever else in this Canvas app. So it could go and trigger a power, power automate flow. It could be used with any of the external connections to any external data sources that's possible within Canvas app. So it's really flexible and powerful to use this elsewhere. This Canvas app then can be embedded within Microsoft Teams, within a Power App, uh, model-driven app form, or within a Dynamics 365 form, allowing you to access this form processor really easily from Dynamics all the way to Teams. The other way we can use our form processing AI model is with Power Automate. So for example, there's a really wide scope of things we can use the AI model with, with Power Automate. So we're gonna take an example of, we're gonna have an email sent, which has my invoice as an attachment, and then we're going to analyze that attachment, pull the information out and create an invoice record in Dynamics. So to do this, we'll just make a new automated cloud flow, which we'll call invoice processing. And then we're going to want to use the Outlook trigger of when an email arrives. So I'll add this and then I'll make the connection to whatever email address I want to monitor for this uh, email to be sent with my attachment and then I'll allow the attachment to be included within Dynamics. And then to link it to my AI Builder, I just simply have to use the AI Builder connection. Within this, all we have all the actions for all the pre-built and custom models we have. So for example, to use our form processing custom model, we just use this action step here. So here we select our model, we select the form type, so a PDF, and then we pass it the form. So here the email will store all of the, however many attachments we have. So by doing this, we'll loop over each of the attachments in our email and pass it through our AI model. The AI connection is all we need to use our AI model which means we could use whatever trigger we prefer. So in this example, we've just used the Outlook trigger, but you could use any trigger that Power Automate has, as long as you find a way to get the file or the PDF PNG into the flow, you can use whatever trigger you want. And then after the AI Builder connection, you can use any action steps you want. So there is so much scope to use this AI Builder not just within the Power Platform to create a record like we are in Dynamics 365, but you could use any connection or any custom connection you make and use this information in any external service or any external database of your choice. As long as there's a connection or as long as you can make that custom connector, 
you can use this AI builder for your organization. So it's a really the power automate use of the AI, AI builder is a really powerful tool. So I'm going to show the example of using our invoice to create an invoice record in Dynamics 365. So to do this, I'm going to use the common data service connector, add a new row, I'm going to add a row onto the invoice table. And then, for example, to show you how we can use the information from our AI model that's extracted. So let's say we want to put the invoice number in the name, you just add dynamic content, and then you just select the invoice number and any information you tagged in your document will be available as dynamic content on the side here and you want to add its value. I can now go in and add the rest of the information and create my invoice lines to finish off this flow ready to use. So our finished flow looks something like this. So we have when our email arrives, processes using the AI builder, creates an invoice, and then for each invoice line, it then creates a record. So we have multiple invoice lines for each invoice. So this flow has run successfully. So an email was sent to the Outlook inbox with the attached invoice, triggering the flow, which then, if I go to my Dynamics instance, created my invoice record with the invoice number in the name and our three products here from our invoice. So that gives a nice summary of how we can implement the AI builder within Power Automate and to create invoice records in Dynamics. So if anyone has any questions about Microsoft AI builder or are looking to adopt it within your organization, then please reach out to us either by email at sales at pragmaticsolutions.co.uk, phone on 01908-038-110 or go to our website pragmaticsolutions.co.uk. Thanks.